Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing, presented by the Demani Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer. I've been using SolidWorks for almost 15 years now. Do rough surfaces have you on edge? Got a kink in your spline? Zen out and come to really understand how SolidWorks surfacing works. Using advanced techniques, I'll demonstrate surface modeling workflows that allow you to quickly and easily create the most challenging of shapes. Located just outside Chicago, Illinois, the Demonic Group is a full-service product development consultancy offering industrial design, design engineering, electrical engineering, and software development services. Welcome to another installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing. In this installment, we'll take a look at creating scallop and pillow shapes, which are very, very common on today's consumer electronic enclosures. Uh, if you're new to surfacing, this is a great technique to, to start out with. It's very straightforward. It builds off the solid features. And so without further ado, let's get into SolidWorks. If you've been following along with this series of video tutorials, you'll be familiar with this generic electronics enclosure by now. It doesn't really matter what's inside it. What's important is the shape of the object. It has arced sides with a G3 connection between them, a flat top, and this kind of scalloped recess that uh, adds some visual interest to the top of the part. And so let's, we're going to take a look at how we created this scallop shape here. And it's actually pretty straightforward. We can get uh, most of the way there with just the solid tools. So the shape starts off with a extrude. Because the part has symmetry about the front and the right plane, only one quarter of it is sketched and extruded. Ultimately, we will mirror at the end to leverage symmetry because doing less work is best. Uh, this part will be created with plastic injection molding, so the outside uh, walls need draft as required for molding so i'm using the parting line draft tool with the top plane as the direction of pull reference picking the outside edges it can't build the draft directly into the first feature here because it would add draft to all of the faces of the part and i really need draft on the outside here i need these to be nice and planar or parallel in regards to the mirror plane such that one mirror it actually goes back together so the recess can be started with a cut feature. We learned the benefits of using manually created offsets in the last video, which I've done here to create a nice looking, really clean curvature curve that doesn't have any uh, tightness of curvature. That is the hallmark of manual or using the offset entities tool within the sketch. So I have my recess and I can get most of the way there with this fillet here. And so when creating these scallop shapes, it's really easy by just using the fillet tool and the depth of this pocket, I believe is either an eighth of an inch or a uh, hundred thousand. It's not really important. What's important is the size of the radius here is larger than the depth of the pocket, in this case, two inches. So this is getting me most of the way there. If we turn off our model edges and investigate, looks pretty good, but I think it could get a little bit better looking here. Note that the, uh, fillet tool has actually created this really sharp uh, edge here and I'm not liking this portion here. However, it's a good starting point. And so what I'll do now is use the delete face to delete portions of the model and now I have a surface body. So I went from a solid body to a surface body and I've changed the default colors for surface edges to red. I just prefer it that way. And what we're going to do now is use the split line tool to isolate a portion of this face here that we want to trim away. And because the fillet tool generated new edges, new edges that can be used to build surface features between, all I need to do is create a style spline here, use the tricks to get the parametric G3 offset, and then use the split line, get that new edge, and then delete face to trim away the excess material. So I now have a really nice starting point for manually creating my scallop. So I'd like this to be a G2 quality connection. Uh, the fillet I had created before was only used for generating these edges. I'd actually had a manual or a, a, a G1 connection or a circular fillet based approach. And here I do want to have that uh, C2. So I'm using the boundary surface tool and I'm picking the edges in direction one, no profiles in direction two here. And I'm setting curvature to face. And I find that sometimes increasing this from the default of one creates a nicer look. Ideally between 1.2 and 1.4 creates the smoothest transition. We can actually preview this by turning on the mesh preview zooming in and we can actually let's increase the scale and we can see that 1.2 is not ideal especially at one 
you know, we have this really aggressive or abrupt lead in. Let's try 1.4. So 1.4 seems to be the sweet spot here. We have that kind of gradual acceleration and we're going to create the surface feature. Likewise, we'll do the exact same thing on the opposite side. And finally, we'll create the last boundary surface feature. So here I'm using this model edge to this model edge, this model edge to this model edge, and I need to actually add curvature to face in several directions. So I have curvature to face to these side profiles such that the connection between this new surface and the existing two surfaces is G2. As well, I need to add curvature to face to ensure that the this surface is also curvature continuous to this large flat face here. Didn't actually need to increase the tangent influence slider. Our combs look pretty good as is, so we're not going to go in and adjust those. So now I've built my surface feature. Finally, we need to put it all back into the model, and here I'm using surface knit to knit all the surfaces together. So now I have a single surface body. All of the surface features have been absorbed in. And when creating symmetrical surface parts, I love the intersect feature for turning them into solids. Here I'm picking the front plane, the right plane, and our surface body, selecting cap plane or openings on surfaces. And what this will do is actually create one solid body from our surfaces. So this is easier than going in and picking all these edges with via a planar surface or surface fill. And finally, we'll use the mirror tool to mirror the symmetric portions and create the entire shape. So let's take a look at the next example where we are flipping the scallop uh, upside down and creating a pillow shape. This is a very common shape on all kinds of electronic devices today. You've certainly seen this kind of geometry on a multitude of different products. But let's take a look at how to create this in SOLIDWORKS. So we're actually starting off with the same features we used in the previous example. However, we're instead of cutting the inside of the shape here, we're going to cut the outside by use selecting the flip side to cut option under our cut extrude feature. So instead of having a recess in the middle of the part, we have a recess around the perimeter of the part. We're going to use delete face to remove the faces from the model, just like we did before. And then we're going to use the boundary surface tool to create a boundary surface between this edge and this edge. Note that I increased the tangent length option here from one, the default, to 1.4. I find this gives a much better result. Looking at one, we see a very abrupt shape here. I prefer the gradual kind of lead in that we get at 1.4. So I'm creating this surface here. I'm doing the same on the opposite side of the part here. Noting the 1.4 direction. Unfortunately, there is no way to parametrically link these together. So you just need to be cognizant of inputting the values correctly. Finally, this is a flip of what we've done before. Looks like one of our edges got lost here. So we'll repick that. So I have curvature to face between the two profiles in direction one, and I have curvature to face between one of the profiles in direction two. And this was a situation where I did need to increase the tangent influence. With the tangent influence at zero, there was some little bit of, of wavering. If we were to increase the density of our, or not the number of combs in our mesh preview, we may be able to see that. But I found that by I needed to bump this up to 100%. The rest of the process is exactly the same as the last example, surface knit to put everything into the model. Rotating the view, we can see that we have two open faces here and we need to solidify the surface shape. We'll do that by using the intersect tool with the front and the right planes, cap planar openings on surfaces, and we'll follow up with the mirror command, mirroring the body and not the features to generate the entire part. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing. Be sure to check out the example SOLIDWORKS files on the Demonic Group website linked in the description below. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Happy SOLIDWORKS surfacing!